What's up, everybody? Dustin and Chris from Solozo here, jumping on today to talk about uh, how and if you want to start selling in the garden and outdoor category on Amazon. Uh, and this is a interesting category; it covers a lot of uh, a lot of territory here, don't you think, Chris? Yeah, it's definitely seasonal. Obviously, you know, outdoor, lawn garden, patio. Definitely seasonal, so I wouldn't know if I would jump in this right away as my first category, mm -hmm. just because you're going to see a lot of ups and downs uh, with the product. If you do one of these, you know, products in this category, have something for the winter. I mean, they do have a snow removal subcategory, so <laughs> you know you could do a product there. But uh, I don't know if I do this my first one, but it is a. I like the I like this category because it's got a lot of subcategories. We just went through yeah. a list. Like farm and ranch, gardening, generators, grills, mowers, outdoor decor, heating, storage, pet. Like there's a bunch in here. So there's Ton, a bunch of different subs you can go into. Tons of opportunities. But like you said, yeah, a lot of them are going to be seasonal. I'm sure you could go through here and find things that um, are not seasonal. But in terms of the percentage of sellers actively who currently sell in this category, 14% of people who sell on Amazon are selling in this category, this garden and outdoor category. Mm -hmm. So it's not the most competitive, but that's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of people and there's a lot of products in here. I, I think another um, thing that's in this category is there's a lot of expensive and large products. Yeah. You're talking about like patio furniture, gazebos, uh, grills, gazebos, yeah, lawn mowers. These are high ticket, higher priced, uh, large, oversized, heavy, you know. So in, in that regard, you that's a great opportunity because people there's not a ton of competition in those types of spaces. Yeah. But you're gonna it's gonna be a lot of money up front. I mean, how many patio sets can you fit into a container? Yeah, ship over here, and then you know th there's so, but there's up to, there's a lot of other stuff too in here. We, we you looked at bug zappers, uh, pest repellents, marshmallow roaster stick. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a ton of potential opportunity. There's a ton of opportunity to differentiate. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're talking about uh, furniture decor. Uh, planters there's all this opportunity to have your your own design um new shape new color scheme whatever on these where you can really differentiate um but i think for the most part there's gonna you know if you can jump into those higher priced items that's fantastic if you're new and you're launching now we're, in, we're at the end of july like this would be the time to get that sourced especially for this category because by the time you get it, listings created, I mean, you'll probably hit up to December a little bit, but I'm just, I mean, assuming uh, mm -hmm. logistics are just backed up like crazy right now. But you could really be ready for like that end of February, early March time. When mm -hmm. That's when the, that's when the daylight saving time happens. That's when uh, you know, the, the temperature gets warmer. So people are eager to get out and they start buying stuff like this. They start doing their landscaping. Yeah, It'd be a good time right now to do that. For sure. But seasonality is something to be very aware of. Yeah. It, it can really put um, a strain on your business if you're killing it for a few months and then dead for a few months. And if you can't get your inventory management under control, you could run out of inventory when you need it the most. And you could be sitting, having your inventory sit in Amazon's warehouses costing you a ton of money for months and months waiting for the seasonality to kick back in again. So it's something to definitely consider when you're doing this. You have to know that if you're going to do uh, outdoor planters, that there's going to be a few months of really high volume and then a lot of months of not volume. <laughs> okay. So between office products and garden and outdoor, which category would you pick? Whew, we just that's the category we just did before it's office products. And this 
In general, I think in both categories, there are, like I said, every category has got thousands of opportunities. You could niche down here and you can find the right product. But in general, office products might have more opportunities in terms of avoiding the seasonality. No. That's just a, that's just tough. Seasonality is, it, it can be really, really tricky. Yeah. Um, but then again, I always come out from the angle is if you can, you know, if you can get products for all seasons and you can manage your inventory really well, then you can, you can kill it here. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Office products? Or yeah. I was just it? thinking about how to, I'd probably go with the patio lawn and garden just because of personal interest. Like mm -hmm. just more fun for me. I don't, can't get really excited over bubble mailers. <laughs> uh, just personally, like, that's just, I got to have some type of like uh, interest in it. Um, I would test them out on my own house or like, you know, bird feeders. I would test them out. It'd be interesting. Like that, I think that's a little bit more fun um, for me. So I, I think like having interest in a category is super important. And I have a little bit more interest in this category than I would office products. Yeah. Well, you're a hundred percent right. If, if you are the, um, gardening type, or if you're the type that really likes to make your outdoor space look really nice, uh, if you're creative in that way, then by all means, this is a category for you to jump in. I think that's the case for any category. Mm -hmm. If you have a good interest in it, then it's just going to resonate. You're going to be able to speak to your uh, potential clients or customers. You're going to make better product. You're going to know the niche. You're going to know what they're looking for next. Yep. I think that just makes a big deal. Like, I don't have any interest in like beauty. Like I right. would not, I would not go do that because I don't even know what to go after. Mm -hmm. So I would just, whatever you personally like. Yeah. But overall, this category, lots of opportunities. The things you're going to want to maybe watch out for is the size of some of these products. Yeah. Um, if that's something that you can overcome, then by all means go for it. Price point's going to be maybe higher on a lot of these things. Weight might be a lot higher on some of these things. So make sure that you're factoring all those things in when you're doing your product research, you're calculating exactly what your FBA costs are going to be, uh, what it's going to cost to source it and ship it. Obviously you want to make sure that it all works out, but it does hit on a lot of our high points. Higher priced items are much easier wow. to compete with. And you definitely have the ability to differentiate a lot of these. So anyway, that's our thoughts on the garden and outdoor category. If you do have products live on Amazon right now, or you're getting ready to start and you're interested in automating your advertising, that's where Solozo can help out. You can go to solozo.com and you can book a demo with Chris or myself. And we will walk you through the platform and how it can help automate the advertising for you so that you can take it completely off your plate and you can focus on sourcing new products in your category that you choose. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next video.